I've been asked to lead off this evening because I'm a ringer. Uh, you heard the phrase irreducibly complex. That's what all of that sounded like to me. He lost me in the first sentence. <laughs> Um, uh, and there are others here on the stage who uh, will have questions, I'm sure, about uh, the, the content and the substance of these uh, theories. And I, I, I understand that there is a, a, a considerable amount of debate within the uh, scientific and quasi-scientific community about these issues. I, I, I have heard repeatedly, because I, I do listen to talk radio as well as most people in this country from time to time, that there is also a view that the media has a view. Um, I suspect I probably have to remind you that the media isn't a thing. It's, a, it's several hundreds of thousands of people who all have quite different views about things. Um, and I have, uh, am approaching this from ignorance, as I said earlier, but also simply uh, from a lifelong interest in um, questions uh, of religion and how they affect uh, uh, culture, how they affect politics, uh, how various different um, groups within religions relate to one another, and so on and so on. Uh, this is a particularly interesting issue, I think, in this country today because there is such a divide between uh, those who are on one side of the political spectrum and tend to, to, to share certain religious points of view and those who are on the other side of the political spectrum which share other religious points of view. And I think, you know, when when you hear something about how the media has commented on intelligent design, that tends to be one of those kind of, that tends to be one of those issues on which people jump from one side to the other and therefore it's seen as uh, something that we jump on. Uh, but it is used and that is why I have some questions this evening. Just to see where those who have posited the theories of intelligent design actually stand on questions of religion. Uh, or if nowhere, then I think we, we need to know nor, nowhere. Um, I address this question to really anybody on the panel, and I'm sure somebody's uh, happy to explain to me. Um, what kind of intelligent being are you proposing, or are you proposing any specific kind of intelligent being? First of all, Keith, I, we welcome your interest in this. Uh, I've dealt with a number of your colleagues over the last mm -hmm. uh, 18 months or so as this has become hugely uh, uh, interesting to the, to the mainstream press. Uh, we find that our scientific arguments and the scientific evidence, which is the basis of our claims and arguments, it's it just simply not reported. And that w I've been on a number of these uh, uh, mainstream talking head programs, and typically the format goes something yeah. like this. You have a three-minute... Uh, uh, backgrounder filed by a reporter that uh, conflates the theory of intelligent design with young earth creationism, mm -hmm. uh, usually has someone speaking who is not part of the intelligent design research community, but someone mm -hmm. at a school board who uh, uh, says something embarrassingly uh, uh, <laughs> ill-considered, and then, uh, then uh, uh, the, the host will come on and say something uh, and introduce our opposite number in the debate with full credentials and then, uh, uh, then they'll turn to me and say, so Mr. Meyer, uh, what do you think of all this? And, yeah. and so we find that it's, there does seem to be in, in the media a perception that uh, uh, this is something that need not be taken seriously. And, well, I, and I'm glad to know that, that you're not the only one who feels abused by the media. I do myself. <laughs> but, in fact, I bet I've been abused more often than you. <laughs> anyway. By, it's, since uh, you were here. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, you asked, Feel free. Yeah, you asked a different question. Uh, the, the, there's a difference between the theory of intelligent design and the particular religious beliefs that those who hold it or don't hold it might happen to have. Uh -huh. And the, the theory is, is, as I said, uh, a, a theory which is, is posing a challenge to the standard Darwinian view of evolution, which says that design is not real but apparent. Right. And the word intelligent design was uh, carefully thought out as a way of making clear what it is we're challenging, what we're not. There are methods of detecting intelligence that have come out through the, the information sciences. It's possible to determine when an effect is the product of agency or intention 
as opposed to undirected natural processes. As a simple example, take the Rosetta Stone. There's inscriptions on the Rosetta Stone that are clearly not the result of uh, uh, wind and erosion, but were the product of, a, of an intentional agent, a scribe. Sure. And there are ways of analyzing symbol strings in cryptography and so forth to determine when you're dealing with something that's the product of law or chance as opposed to something that's the product of intelligence. The and fact so that, that I didn't understand what you just said, and <laughs> I bet you maybe a tenth of the audience had some kind of an idea, is why, <laughs> is why the media will tend to uh, not explain it very accurately. I just thought I, I'm interjecting to say well, only that. Let's get to even, maybe try another example. Um, we, we're talking about the digital code in cells. It's information. Right. Um, we think from the science you can tell that there is such information and from what we know about the, what causes information in our experience that mm -hmm. there therefore must have been an intelligence. We cannot tell from those symbol strings in the DNA who the author of that information is. It's like having a computer program right. or a section of literary text where the, where the text is not signed. So fr from the science we think we can tell that there was an intelligence but we don't claim to know from the science the identity or nature of the, uh, of, of the intelligent agent responsible. So we've been, we've been portrayed as sneaky and uh, uh, underhanded because we're not willing to come out and say we think it's God. In fact, some of us, for other reasons, beyond the, the, the biological evidence, mm -hmm. uh, think that the designer likely was God. But we're trying to be careful, not sneaky, when we say we can tell that sure. there was an intelligence, but we can't tell from the science the nature and identity of same. I understand that, and, and, and I'm, uh, I'm, I'm happy to accept blame on, on behalf of the media for inadequate explanations, but also for, uh, for something curious which has happened. We're happy to accept blame for using too many big words. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> but one of the difficulties we have, we have all encountered, I think, is that uh, uh, in, in our understanding of, of the message that you are uh, giving us, is that it is the way it's being used. And in our culture at the moment, it's being, uh, your, your views are being opposed by much, m the majority of the scientific community and, in, and, and, and much of the progressive side of the Christian community, this being a largely Christian country, and embraced by the conservative spectrum of the uh, uh, Christian community, embraced most enthusiastically by those who take the Bible quite literally. Um, I, in the past week, have been listening to sermons being <coughs> preached in various parts of the country. I love listening to sermons of all kinds, and I find, generally speaking, that preachers are marvelous people to spend time with. Um, and intelligent design was used in the arguments of all the preachers in all the conservative churches I have attended, actually, in the last several years. And Intelligent design is a theory which doesn't get much credence at all in any of the progressive churches I have attended in the last several years. Although it's clear to me that most of the people in these progressive churches also happen to believe in God since 98 or 9 percent of the Christians in the country do believe in God. Um, <laughs> but, that, but, but that in other words, right. that <laughs> belief doesn't make them want to support intelligent design whether they understand it or not. It makes them want to oppose it. The belief on the, on the conservative side makes them want to embrace it. Are you comfortable with that political result of this argument? Well, maybe I can say something. Um, no, sure, we're not. Uh, I, I think people don't, most people don't understand intelligent design and try to fit it into pre-existing categories. Certainly that's true in the scientific community. Most people have, uh, have a skewed view of intelligent design there. And many people throughout the country do too. And I think that the reason that it's accepted in one, uh, one segment of society versus another has a lot less to do with what exactly the theory of intelligent design says than, uh, than stereotypes that already exist uh, in the country. Uh, you know, uh, let me give you a little analogy from, from you know, uh, a, a while back, about 60, 70 years ago. When the Big Bang Theory was first proposed, uh, a lot of scientists hated it because it seemed to suggest a religious event, creation, you know, what could the Big Bang be except, you know, 
the beginning of the universe. Uh, but what we're trying to get across, and not as successfully as we'd like, is that we want to focus on the evidence, because uh, in Steve's intro, things have really changed in the past couple decades in science. There are things at the bottom of life nobody expected. There are things, features of the universe beyond the Big Bang nobody expected. And they all are pointing generally in the same way. That is, the, this universe seems to be balanced on a, on a knife edge to permit life to exist. And the basis of life that we've discovered in the past few decades in the cell is incredibly sophisticated technology. Uh, that's the message we want to get across, but unfortunately it kind of has to be presented in a background which, which already has some stereotypes that uh, kind of confuse issues. It's, tend to, it's often used to back up suggestions that Genesis is actually accurate history. Are you comfortable with that? Could you give me an example? Oh, well, uh, several of the sermons, as I say, that I've heard in the last uh, few weeks. Uh, I I'm not suggesting that they're quoting you accurately or that the media is quoting you accurately, but you have fallen into those two quite distinct baskets within the Christian community. And it's fascinating, is all. Um, uh, how, how, would you, how would you like to correct the misapprehensions? Yeah, very good. That, 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 that we need some more baskets. There's not enough categories to hold you know, this new idea. But uh, it I might be helpful just to make a, a careful distinction between intelligent design and creationism, for, just for the record. Uh, intelligent des we, we think there are two key differences between intelligent design and creationism. The first is our theory is not a theory about the book of Genesis, the days of creation, or the length of time that the earth has existed. It's a theory about the origin of the complexity and information-bearing properties of life and the fine-tuning of the universe. Uh, secondly, uh, the method of inquiry is different, whereas creationism takes as a, its starting point a scriptural text and makes deductions or inferences from that. We're making inferences from biological data rather than deductions from a religious authority. So uh, our theory may have uh, implications that are friendly to a broadly theistic world view, but the theory is based on scientific evidence and it is not a, a theory about the book of Genesis. I think as moderator, we could go all evening on just no, no, Keith's good points cool. here, so <laughs> let me shift over to Jim Hoffman for his set of questions. Thank you. 